Make sure to like and subscribe for more videos like this. Good evening. I want to run some trains. What's going on, everybody? Drax's going to help MC tonight. We'll call it Wampir Wednesday. I'm filming on a Wednesday, and we've got some vampires in the house. Tonight we're going to run Lionel's All Hallows Eve 460 British style, I suppose, steam engine. And then uh, two of the passenger cars, the All Hallows Eve Express, and then the Dracula Bobble car from Lionel to keep with the uh, the theme. So grab your garlic, put it around your neck, and we'll take a look at this. The passenger cars in particular are pretty cool because they flicker kind of like lightning. So stay tuned. Here are the spooky passenger cars. If you have light sensitivities, turn away, I suppose. But they're cool. I think they've remade these as Harry Potter cars. I don't know whether the lights flash like this or what, but these are the Halloween cars. And then the Dracula car. Let's get the engine going. And as a bonus, if you stick around, I'm going to read the opener to the original Dracula by Bram Stoker. And maybe if you like it, give it a thumbs up, and then I'll continue reading more chapters. Otherwise, I'll move on and stick to the trains. Brom Stoker's Dracula, Chapter 1, Jonathan Harker's Journal, Kept in Shorthand, 3rd May, B Streets, left Munich at 8.35 p.m. on 1st May, arriving at Vienna early next morning. Should have arrived at 6.46, but train was an hour late. Budapest seems a wonderful place. From the glimpse which I got of it, from the train, and the little I could walk through the streets. I feared to go very far from the station, as we had arrived late and would start as near the correct time as possible. The impression I had was that we were leaving the west and entering the east, the most western of splendid bridges over the Genube, which is here of noble width and depth, took us among the traditions of Turkish rule. We left in pretty good time and came after nightfall to Klausenberg. Here I stopped for the night at the Hotel Royale. I had for dinner a rather supper, a chicken done up some way with red pepper, which was very good but thirsty. I asked the waiter and he said it was called paprika hendel, and that, as it was a national dish, I should be able to get it anywhere along the Carpathians. I found my smattering of German very useful here, indeed. I don't know how I should be able to get on without it. Having had some time at my disposal when in London, I had visited the British Museum and made search among the books and maps in the library regarding Transylvania. It had struck me that some foreknowledge of the country could hardly fail to have some importance in dealing with the noblemen of that country. I find that the district he named is in the extreme east of the country, just on the borders of three states, Transylvania, Moldavia, and Bukovina, in the midst of the Carpathian Mountains, one of the wildest and least known portions of Europe. I was not able to light on any map or
a work giving the exact locality of Castle Dracula. As there are no maps of this country as yet to compare with our own ordnance survey maps. But I found that Bistreets, the post town named by Count Dracula, is a fairly well known place. I shall enter here some of my notes as they may refresh my memory when I talk over my travels with Mina. In the population of Transylvania, there are four distinct nationalities Saxons in the south, and mixed with them, the Wallachs who are the descendants of the Dacians, Magyars in the west, and Zelkis in the east and north. I am going among the latter, who claim to be descended from Attila and the Huns. This may be so, for when the Magyars conquered the country in the 11th century, they found the Huns settled in it. I read that every known superstition in the world is gathered in the horseshoe of the Carpathians, as if it were the center of some sort of imaginative whirlpool. If so, my stay may be very interesting. I did not sleep well, though my bed was comfortable enough, for I had all sorts of strange dreams. There was a dog howling all night under my window, which may have had something to do with it, or it may have been the paprika, for I had to drink up all the water in my carafe, and was still thirsty. Towards morning I slept and was wakened by the continuous knocking at my door, so I guess I must have been sleeping soundly then. I had for breakfast more paprika and a sort of porridge of maize flour, which they said was mamalika, and eggplant stuffed with forcemeat, a very excellent dish, which they called implatata. I had to hurry breakfast, for the train started a little before eight, or rather it ought to have done so for after rushing to the station at 7.30, I had to sit in the carriage for more than an hour before we began to move. It seemed to me that further east you get the more unpunctual the trains. What ought they be to China? All day long we seemed to dawdle through a country which is full of beauty of every kind. Sometimes we saw little towns or castles on the top of steep hills, such as we see in old missiles, Sometimes we ran by rivers and streams which seemed from the wide stony margin on each side of them to be the subject of great floods. It takes a lot of water and running strong to sweep the outside edge of a river clear. At every station there were groups of people, sometimes crowds and in all sorts of attire. Some of them were just like the peasants at home or those I saw coming through France and Germany with short jackets and round hats and homemade trousers, but others were very picturesque. The women looked pretty, except when you got near them, but they were very clumsy about the waist. They had all full white sleeves of some kind or another, and most of them had big belts with a lot of strips of something fluttering from them like the dresses in a ballet, but of course they were petticoats under them. The strangest figure we saw were the Slovaks, who were more barbarian than the rest, with their big cowboy hats, great baggy dirty white trousers, white linen shirts, and enormous heavy leather belts nearly a foot wide, all studded over with brass nails. They wore high boots with their trousers tucked into them, heavy leather belts nearly a foot wide all studded with brass nails, and had long black hair and heavy black mustaches. They are all very picturesque, but do not look prepossessing. On the stage they would be set down at once at some old oriental band of brigands, they are, however, I am told, very harmless and rather wanting in natural self-assertion. It was on the dark side of twilight when we got to Bistritz, which is a very interesting old place, being practically on the frontier from the Borgo Pass, leads it from Bukovina. It's a very stormy existence, and it certainly shows marks of it. Fifty years ago, a series of great fires took place, which made terrible havoc on five separate occasions. At the very beginning of the 17th century, it underwent a siege of three weeks and lost 13,000 people. The casualties of war proper being assisted by famine and disease. Count Dracula had directed me to go to the Golden Crone Hotel, which I found, to my great delight, to be thoroughly old-fashioned, for of course I wanted to see all I could on the way to the country. I was evidently expected, for when I got near the door I faced... A cheery-looking elderly woman in the usual peasant dress, white armed garment with long brown apron, front and back of colored stuff fitting almost too tightly for modesty. When I came closer, she bowed and said, 
the air Englishman. Yes, I said, Jonathan Harker. She smiled and gave some message to an elderly man in white shirt sleeves who had followed her to the door. He went, but immediately returned with a letter. My friend, welcome to the Carpathians. I'm anxiously expecting you. Sleep well tonight. At three tomorrow, the diligence will start for Bukovina. A place on it is kept for you. At the Borgo Pass, my carriage will await you and will bring you to me. I trust that your journey from London has been a happy one and that you enjoy your stay in my beautiful land. Your friend, Dracula. <laughs>